I recall when the first Sniper Ghost Warrior came out. I popped the game into my Xbox 360, super excited because those days sniping was cool. Slow-mo camera shots were in style, and the moment I started, I set my controller down and I never came back. That was until I got a taste for Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, and it was an improvement upon the first one. So the question I'm asking myself is, where do they mess up in Sniper Ghost Warrior contracts? My name is Tanner, and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. Contracts is anything but story heavy. Russia has been exploiting Siberia for resources for a good amount of time and while Siberia sees nothing in return. Siberia then begins to rise up to regain their independence and break away from Russia. But something they didn't see was the corruption coming. Once Siberia gained its liberty, the higher powers began to keep the wealth for themselves and now a rebellion known as the Siberian Wolves wants to take down the corruption once and for all. Now that's pretty much it. Through the campaign, your contracts are to take down the executives before they can cause any harm to the people of Siberia or start a war with another country. This game's story is weak, so to say. It's best described, at least in my words, a filler story. I personally thought that the main purpose of this game's story was so it could feel like it had some kind of texture behind the contracts rather than just adding the contracts in the game and saying, go get them, tiger. Now my main complaint is how deep the story refuses to go. Starting off, I was very interested. A simple idea, but it had my attention. But the punchline just wasn't there. I mean, the game tells you at the end why you had to do the contracts, but honestly, they told you why it was important to do the contracts in the load screen briefing. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate any effort towards any kind of story, but 40 bucks for a filler story? That's just not my forte. Now let's get kicking into some gameplay. Now this section of this game inspired all things love and hate. Contracts is wanting to be an advanced sniping game with new mechanics detailing wind, distance, and bullet drop. Thing is, that's not really a new mechanic. Sure, I haven't played a game with a white line helping me line up my shots, but the meaning behind it is in many games. Anyways, in Contracts you'll visit 5 maps that have their each and own set of contracts that you must complete. Contracts are the main objectives in the game, so killing key figures or disabling a train filled with explosives. All contracts must be complete before you finish the mission. Now, before you begin a contract, you can customize your loadout with a sniper, pistol, primary weapon, and some gadgets. You can also purchase skills for your mask, suit, support, and gadgets. Support being the turret to help you synchronize shots and a drone you can use to scout out enemies. Now skills mostly cost money, but as you get further into the skill tree, now stick with me here, the skills cost money plus skulls, some kind of locked paper, and then stars? Now I wish I could say what they were called, but honestly this game doesn't tell you. Here's the deal, you won't have hardly any skills unlocked by the time you beat this game if you want weapons, weapon attachments, camo, stuff like that, which also costs every bit of currency I just mentioned. The way you earn currency in this game is by completing contracts and challenges. Contracts are easy, but challenges, those are tedious, and if you aren't willing to do the challenges, but you still want skills and weapons, you're just going to have to replay missions. And I'm going to tell you this, after mission 2, the game feels like a chore. I really wanted to give this game some leeway. I know CI isn't the biggest of companies, but in the tutorial, instead of saying upgrade your support, it says you'll upgrade your recon, so if they didn't give a shit to care about their game, then why should I? Now, upon dropping into the world, you're going to look at your map and see where to go. Almost always the objectives line up so you shouldn't need to backtrack. Once in the area that's within the red or blue box, you can use your mask mode to pinpoint where the exact location of the object is. Now it's come time for the fun part, and that's gunplay. Is the shooting in this game fun? Yes, but it's overtaken by frame drops and a slow-mo camera with ear-piercing audio issues. And I'm not a stickler about frames, and everybody should know that, but the frames in this game will slow the whole game down, and you think you're about to crash, but you don't. And this game is pretty much a simulator for that. While you're aiming down your sights, the game will lag. When you're running in the game, it will lag. When you're taking a shit in your bathroom and you pause the game, the frames will still somehow find a way to drop to the depths of hell. <laughs> On the very few occasions the frames didn't want to spaz out, you know, it was kind of fun. The gameplay mechanics from sniping to executing an enemy felt like a little accomplishment. Now the gunplay wasn't the smoothest though, but it also wasn't the roughest either. Sniper Ghost Warrior 1 was actually some of the roughest gunplay I've ever seen in a game, and they advanced it from Sniper Ghost Warrior 1 to where we are now, and honestly, it pushed me to beat the game. 
Now, along with sniping, you have different types of bullets, explosives, EMPs, lures, etc. Now, I never use these outside the tutorial missions, and there's multiple reasons why. But I'm just going to tell you my main one. Outside of the tutorial, there really isn't a need for them. You can sneak right past anything as long as you're not literally right in front of it. And your heavy sniper ammo can kill any person one shot in the head and one shot anywhere if you have the right sniper. So why even worry about different ammo types? Gadget wise, I'd stick with the adrenaline shot and the med kits because any grenade other than the gas grenade isn't worth the space. But this game is rather difficult even on easy due to sometimes you can't hear enemies shots. Even though they don't have a silencer, you still can't pinpoint them. Chances are they're right below you shooting you through a staircase that you can't even shoot through. So yeah, this game is rough around the edges and a bit underbaked, but somewhere amidst this pile of needles is a couple enjoyable moments to have and moments that might actually visually impress you. So that's going to bring me to the design. Design, oh design, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts looks good when it wants to. Now for the most part, it's standard graphics, but it does have some eye-popping moments, and I will admit that. I will applaud you for doing one thing better than a AAA company, and that's ray tracing. Which company? Bethesda. I was real impressed with that. So now, everything in this game isn't bad, just most of it. One huge complaint is the world. I know some people like the level designs, but honestly, it's a lot of empty space outside the objective areas. A lot of the surrounding areas have minefields that you have to use your mask mode or else you're going to die, or just two groups of enemies patrolling. Other than that, it's about as bland as oatmeal with no sugar. Sound is where my issue came in big time. In the loading brief, the slow-mo camera, and the game as a whole, the audio will pop and then start buzzing like your game is about to crash. And if you play wearing headphones, just be warned. And if you play on TV, you might want to check your speakers after this game. Not only does it take away from the game as a whole, but it's genuinely annoying. And I'm pretty sure I have tinnitus now. Here's two clips. And yes, all I'm going to show this time is two clips of sound. And that's because you came for a review and not dubstep. Imminent danger. Eliminate the good doctors, Antanasia Alikanova and Nikita Zaitsev. Locate. Overall, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, it is a rough game, but CI has good intentions. I hope. And I'm sure if they really worked their ass off, they could stun us with something stellar. But not this game, or at least in my personal opinion, just not this series. It was a fun game when it wanted to act like a game and not Morpheus busting through my speaker asking red pill or blue pill while I could hear the machines fighting in the background. Contracts is priced 40 bucks and it's worth $10. Despite all its issues, you can see they tried to put some kind of effort in it. Yeah, it's a buggy mess and someone should call Billy the Exterminator, but it's enjoyable when it wants to be and they understand graphics better than Bethesda. And I like popping people's heads off. I mean, that was a pretty cool piece. Now. This was a phenomenal gaming experience, as all games should be. Now, I've said my piece, and if you enjoyed this, why not go ahead and help me out and hit that subscribe button? But if this was trash, then hit that thumbs down. I'll be fine.